And the Mavericks are on the board. Here the Broncos coming in. The Miami Red Hawks. St. Cloud State University. Up Colorado College is off and running here tonight. In Denver National Champions. Who's going to beat these guys? The history of college hockey dates back to before World War II. Prior to 2011, the CCHA and WCHA had mostly dominated the sport. With Penn State announcing a men's college hockey program, ripples were sent across the landscape. And so Brian Faison, who was the director of athletics at the University of North Dakota, Peg Bradley Doppis, who was the director of athletics at the University of Denver, and myself, ended up meeting in a, in a comfort suite just outside the Denver airport. We went over to a little table that was kind of in their breakfast area and we sat down and we took out a piece of paper and we started to sketch out what would later become the NCHC. Those sketches wouldn't be worthy of a museum but would lay the groundwork for one of the most dominant runs in college hockey history. It was a difficult conversation because we knew it was going to disrupt the hockey world. Um, but we had a commitment to our institutions and we had a commitment to the game at a high level. Um, and we knew we had to take this leap of faith. And when I started to hear of the teams that were moving into what became the NCHC, I, like, I was blown away because you took two really good programs out of the CCHA, you took six real blue blood successful programs coming out of the WCHA, combining them into what really became a super conference. The first thing is, is what is that going to look like, right? You know, and uh, when, when you got to talking about the member institutions that were going to be a part of this, uh, there, there became some certainty as far as going to be a good thing going forward. Um, you know, obviously when the Big Ten realigned itself and, and then left uh, some teams looking to find a conference. With some of the most successful programs looking to retain their strength within the sport, work continued behind the scenes. After about two to three weeks of daily uh, combing sources, I uh, came to the conclusion that it was definitely real. I, I can't tell you how happy I am you could all join us here today. Uh, this is a, a wonderful occasion for all of us and for those of us who enjoy seeing hockey at the highest levels. Uh, this, is, this is a monumental occasion. I remember laying awake at night uh, before that event and just you know, keeping my fingers crossed that we'd done the right thing. A lot of people were counting on us. I mean, we were talking about people's livelihoods here. We were talking about experiences of students, um, students who had committed to go to WCHA or CCHA schools who were now going to be in this new league that nobody knew about. And so, the National Collegiate Hockey Conference was born with Colorado College, the University of Denver, Miami University, the University of Minnesota Duluth, the University of Nebraska Omaha, and the University of North Dakota. I mean, I think it all started um, of institutions that thought about their men's ice hockey programs very similarly. We wanted to win conference championships, wanted to win national championships, were investing in their, in their programs at a high level and, and wanted to be surrounded by other programs that were thinking the same way. And so I think the initial group of institutions that founded the conference definitely was that. And as the conversation uh, went on to other institutions, eventually St. Cloud State and Western Michigan, um, that same thought and philosophy was, was part of um, the discussion as, as we got to the point of adding those two institutions. Again, adding St. Cloud to that regional rivalry I think ended up being really important for the league. Um, you know, Western is, is brought to an element to uh, not just to being a regional rivalry to Miami, they're really not to the other schools, but they've really fit in pretty well with the style of play and, and everything about uh, how they run their program within the league. With the institutions in place, selecting the league's first commissioner was a top priority. Well, the selection of a commissioner was a, a difficult process for us. Um, again, not everybody knew what the NCHC was. Uh, we needed somebody who could sort of see the future and recognize that a new college hockey conference with this group of schools could be successful. We did do a national search. The committee ultimately decided on former U.S. Olympic Committee CEO, Jim Shear. He also had incredible background with different um, groups who could provide sponsorship support for us. And as we thought about what's going to happen with our championships, how are we going to do different revenue streams, how are we going to engage uh, in, in terms of things like corporate documents, who's going to help us get there. With the staff taking shape, office space was next on the to-do list, 
and Colorado Springs emerged as the front runner. First 10 national championships came here, and so uh, there was a history just surrounding the game. So Bill Hibble, who's the CEO of the El Pomar Foundation, was passionate about Colorado Springs becoming the epicenter of amateur sports in the United States. And he was willing to invest to make sure that all the top amateur sports organizations were housed there. That ultimately included the NCHC as they began their rise to the top. 